Could this be the year we see a family lead bill pass the Minnesota legislature? Both Republicans and Democrats are trying to pass different versions. The GOP bill would create a new insurance product that businesses could use in a benefits package and tax credits, an incentive for businesses with 50 or fewer employees to offer paid leave. A DFL back plan would offer up to 12 weeks paid leave in a state run system, kind of like the one for jobless claims funded by a payroll tax. This morning I talked to State Senator Julia Coleman of Waconia. She introduced the Republican bill last week. Take a look. And joining us right now is Senator Coleman. Thank you so much, Senator Coleman, for coming on. Thank you for having me. All right. You have a paid leave proposal. That really was stunning for a lot of people. This is coming from you, a Republican senator, leading to the hope that perhaps something can be worked out on this issue that's so important. Yes, I believe that in the Republican Party, we are so much more than just the party of no. This is a big topic amongst my peer group. And Group, and it is only growing in importance. And I got to experience it firsthand when I gave birth to my first son without any paid family leave. But I don't think the answer is something else that will crush our small businesses. It's not another mandate, another tax, another threat of fine. It is a free market solution to help our small businesses be able to compete with the large companies that are already offering paid family leave. It's an interesting point there. You mentioned that you're not the party of no the Republican Party of Minnesota statewide has really struggled in statewide elections to attract younger people and young women. I mean, is this the kind of issue that the Republicans have not been paying enough attention to up until this proposal? I do think so. And I think that's why it's so important to elect people of all ages, from all backgrounds, into the legislature to provide all perspectives in our citizen legislature. And I stand up in my caucus and I say, I may be young, but I have the perspective of what women and mothers my age are going through. And they listen. And it's amazing to watch them jump on board with these issues because they say, look, I don't have a line into that peer group, that age group, but you do. And so I'm going to listen to that. All right. And you, I must say, you've got three children under three, three boys under three. So that, that gives you probably extra credit on that. Um, in terms of um, this proposal, the paid leave proposal, we're looking at a picture of your family, which is adorable, and your husband, Jacob, and the three boys. You'll have a line in hockey someday. <laughs> That's what my father said when we found out we were having identical boys. He said, oh, you have your own starting hockey line. Very cool. Um, in terms of your proposal, explain it, because it's very different than some of the DFL proposals that we've been hearing about. Our proposal authorizes the creation of paid family leave insurance. Now in Minnesota, in order for an insurance product to be created, it does have to be authorized through the legislature. It is also partnered with tax credits to help small businesses, businesses with 50 or fewer employees, be able to purchase and afford this insurance. Now Minnesota is kind of pioneering this. There's been other paid family leave insurance proposals passing with bipartisan and near unanimous support in other states. But what, we're, what we are doing differently here is offering the tax credits to give those small businesses the leg up they need to compete with the large companies when it comes to attracting and retaining talent. It is not a mandate. It is not a fine. It is not another tax. It is a free market solution to a very important issue. Now, critics say this is simply going to leave people out and that also by relying on tax breaks, you're going to have to have businesses wait until they get that tax break when it comes to tax time. And that's simply not feasible for a lot of individuals and businesses. What are your thoughts? How do you address that criticism? There is no perfect solution here. My solution does not cover everybody. That's true. I'm fine saying that, but their solution will be another tax. It will crush our small businesses that are still struggling because Tim Wall shut them down for so long. We need to give them a, a hand up. We don't need to crush them any further than they already have done. In Washington State, for example, where they have a plan much similar to what Democrats are in Minnesota are proposing, their payroll tax for paid family leave, they just announced a couple months ago, will be increasing by 50%. We don't need that here in Minnesota. Well, I, I know that the, the proposals are very different, but the bottom line is you think it's a really good idea, as do many of your constituents, and the Democrats think it's a very good idea, as do many of their constituents. Is there any chance 
that a compromise can be worked out because this is the thing that I think drives a lot of Minnesotans crazy when you have the will on both sides and even the means and yet you can't come together. There are some areas that I think we can come together and sit down and I would welcome those conversations. If it comes to a mandate, uh, anything that is going to hamper our small businesses, Republicans are not on board for that. If we want to possibly increase the size and scope of the tax credits, that's something I'm willing to talk about. But we do want to have a seat at this table. I want a seat at this table for young people and people of all ages that are going to benefit from having this conversation about paid family leave. All right. I do want to ask you, because people who know will be mad if I don't ask you, and people who don't know I think will be interested, your father-in-law is the other Senator Coleman, Senator Norm Coleman. We're looking at a picture of him with one of your sons. How is he doing? He is doing so fantastic. He still runs schools around most people I know. He's working in Washington, D.C., four days a week. And most importantly, his health is doing phenomenally. He's still getting scans at Mayo. He's still doing his immunotherapy. And he is loving life as a grandfather. I bet with, with three grandsons uh, in three years, that, that's quite a bit. Well, listen, Senator Coleman, a, a pleasure to meet you and thank you so much. We certainly appreciate it. And it's great to hear that your father-in-law, Senator Coleman, is doing so well. Thank you, Esme.